Nvidia does good for the gaming community as a whole. Gamers Nexus gets to the bottom of why your 4090s bottoming out and Intel hit with a billion dollar lawsuit. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today's top story is Nvidia doing something kind of good for everybody, which is really surprising. This is in partnership with Microsoft bringing out Direct Storage 1.1, which in case you're not familiar with, is the new data decompression and compression software that should allow PCs to have game loading times that are much quicker than previous. Texture loading, all of that kind of stuff should happen a lot quicker because it can bypass the CPU and go straight to the GPU to do all of that data processing. This is something that the modern consoles are benefiting from on the PS5 in the Series S and X. They are much quicker at loading video games and resuming video games than PCs, and this is gonna be the step towards that, which I am all in favor of. However, one of the limitations for that with Direct Storage 1.1, it being done in collaboration with all the GPU manufacturers, is that it has focused on a lot of APIs, but has excluded Vulkan. But that has changed as of today, with Nvidia adding driver support in their latest drivers for the Vulkan aspect of Direct Storage 1.1. There's a Vulkan extension that's gonna be enabled on the NVIDIA GPUs. So this is something that NVIDIA is doing in collaboration. They're making it so that their GPUs actually work with Vulkan Games Direct Storage 1.1. Other GPU manufacturers haven't done that as of yet. Obviously, nothing's precluding Intel and AMD from adding a Vulkan extension to Direct Storage 1.1, but NVIDIA is beating them to the punch, making the technology available to more and more games. There's not any game out there right now that's super popular that takes advantage of it. However, we will likely start to see that change as the Days move forward. I personally am very excited to see this happen, to get more details on this, and to see Direct Storage 1.1 implemented to get super fast loading times. And it has not been a super fast journey to figure out what is going on with the 16 pin power connector melting on the RTX 4090s. There's been tons of speculation from it being soldered versus crimped connectors. Then it came out that there was two different companies making connectors and one was likely gonna be worse than the other. But Gamers Nexus has gotten to the bottom of it, but not before a Founders Edition card has actually been the first one to melt in RTX 4090 FE being the one to melt, which is actually notable for what Gamers Nexus found out, but that's not gonna stop an RTX 4090 owner from starting a class action lawsuit against Nvidia for these melting 16 pins, saying that Nvidia marketed and sold the 4090 with a defective and dangerous power cable plug and socket, which has rendered consumer cards inoperable and poses a serious electrical and fire hazard for each and every purchaser. Well, if you go over to Gamers Nexus's video, which we'll leave linked in the video description. That is not the case. Any and every 4090 power connector can fail, and likely can fail on the RTX 4080, but it only does so under specific conditions. The Gamers Nexus essentially came to the same conclusion that Johnny Guru did, that it's end user error, but they have a lot more details that they go into in their video, which I highly recommend you watch. Essentially, it boils down to a few things, and mostly it is that the end user is not plugging in the cable fully, which leads to other issues. So they found that there were two issues related to seating and how you plugged in the cable, but it it wasn't just that the connector wasn't fully plugged in, it was that it was making connection at wrong points where the connector would go skew, as you can see in their video right there, and that was leading to certain parts of it getting hot. They found that this was reproducible. It can happen with either connector, whether it's an adapter that's provided with your GPU, whether it was made by NTK, whether it was made by one cable manufacturer or another, or whether it's a native cable on a power supply. It really comes down to, are you plugging it firmly, fully in, and is it straight where you're not going to have poor connections? Make sure your cable is in all the way. If your 4090 power cable is not penetrating deeply enough, you could potentially have issues. They also found out that it's still a low failure rate, only 0.05 to 0.1% of all connections are having this issue, but there seems to be significant enough evidence that it's an end user problem that is brought about by poor design choices that Nvidia made where it cannot click in hard enough there's not enough fail safes to stop it from actually melting where it's not doing any sort of verification to make sure it's firmly inserted, which it can actually do. So there does need to be a change brought forward so that end users can't screw this up as badly as they can in the future. But it's not that the connectors are faulty, it's that every single one can be inserted poorly and create issues if enough power is run through that. So again, watch the full Gamers Nexus deep dive linked in the video description, but plug in your cables all the way and you likely won't have any problems. That's essentially what the answer is.
That's what my mama always told me. And my mama always told me to check on crypto stonks and it's still a rough ride for the crypto market. FTX has been a, a tricky pickle to nail down. Bitcoin's down 1.79% to be at 16,532. Good words there, Brett. Ethereum down 3% to be at 12.08 and Dogecoin down 1.46% to be at eight and a half cents. And I'm down to hear what Reese has to say because he's like my mama in some ways and that I love him. Thank you for the hottest tech deals, Reese. Wow, my hands are sizzling from trying to touch them. And you know, Elon Musk is sizzling at the mouth to try to get people to quit Twitter even more with him putting out details about what Twitter 2.0 is gonna look like for the employees, releasing an email to all Twitter employees saying that he wants them to be only extremely hardcore. And if you can't be that, he wants you to quit or resign and you'll get three months severance and saying, if you are sure you want to be part of the new Twitter, please click yes on the link below low and they have until 5 p.m. Eastern on Thursday, November 17th. So Elon Musk not being very clear on what extremely hardcore means, but only exceptional performance will constitute a passing grade. It's really hard to understand what exactly that means. Obviously, Elon Musk is known for running his companies in a way that's uh, very strict and rigorous and certain employees don't jive with whether or not the company shift in Twitter is going to allow them to embrace this remains to be seen. There has been a whole lot of issues of people who complain about Elon Musk in the Slack channels on Twitter are getting fired, even though previously Twitter encouraged an atmosphere where those kinds of things could be discussed in Slack channels, Elon Musk no longer allowing that. It's also hard to see whether or not this is because he's actually looking for a dedicated fan base or if he's trying to frame layoffs in a completely different way because initially it was reported that 75% of Twitter staff was going to be laid off and then it was brought down to 50% but if he could get it up to that 75% by forcing people to not commit to extremely hardcore stuff it doesn't look like a layoff and then he just said no they quit because they couldn't hack it and that makes it look better for capitalistic reasons. But in the same report of the Washington Post that found out the email that Elon Musk sent out, they also have some details about how the Twitter blue rollout actually happened, finding out that it's uh, it's not exactly financially going to save Twitter, which has about a billion dollars in debt that it needs to pay off every year from now on in order to even become profitable. And they found that only 150,000 users had signed up to Twitter blue before it was shut down and you can no longer access it, which Elon Musk said should change on the 29th of November. November, but that would only bring it about $14.4 million in annual revenue, which still wouldn't be enough to even make a dent in the amount of debt that they have to pay off in order to achieve profitability. And there's more details coming out on another one of Elon Musk's companies, Tesla finding some details in the new NHTSA reporting, which is coming out on safety performance on advanced vehicle technologies, which has a lot of crash data that's going on in there. And it's becoming reported that there are two more deaths being associated with Tesla's advanced driving technology. In the report, it does find that Tesla's autopilot does have the highest accident numbers for any sort of advanced driver technology. However, that could be because Tesla has more miles driven on that and we don't actually know what it is based on a percentage, whether or not it is more safe than other ones. If it drives more miles, thereby it would make sense that it would have higher accidents rates. But there are new deaths being reported with Tesla's autopilot technology and it's unknown whether it was done with the full self-driving beta or what the details are, but the deaths are being reported and it's sad to hear. But a good thing to hear that space stuff not related to SpaceX, the Artemis One rocket launched and it's going to the moon. NASA's a, not literally, figuratively, this is the first step of the Artemis program to get us back to the moon as the United States. This is just gonna go into an elliptical orbit around the Earth and then it'll go to the moon. Orbit first, then moon. And you wanna cycle in front of your desk? Great segue. Why would you not want to? Thermal Take coming out with the Cycle Desk 100 for the cycling esports market, which I just... I understand the marketing here that they're trying to make it for cyclists and they try to make it seem like this is great, but it doesn't include all of this cycling gear that you see right here to make it so that you go in front of the desk. It's just, it's just a computer cart that has RGB. And I guess that somehow makes it made for cyclists. I, I don't fully understand, but good try Thermal Take. I thought it would be cool if it had the cycling gear but it doesn't. And some people thought it would be cool if consoles had Discord and 
Now it, it kind of does. The November update for Xbox coming out and showing off that there's built-in Discord voice chat coming out to all users. It's also going to use noise suppression in Discord voice on the Series X and Series S. And there are new enhanced power options and customization on the Xbox consoles if you want to use those. So the November update for the Xbox does seem to be a pretty big deal and a big number for Intel's billion dollars because they're getting hit with a lawsuit for CPU patent infringement, but not just hit, but they were actually ordered by a federal jury that they must pay it to VLSI, which they violated patents for Cascade Lake and Skylake microprocessors regarding a patent for improvements to data processing with VLSI saying that Intel violated the patent millions and millions of infringements per second because of all of the clock speed optimizations that were being made. Intel disagrees with this ruling, plans to appeal it. This is on top of another ruling that came out that Intel owes $2.2 billion to VLSI, which Intel has appealed because they don't agree with it. Intel saying that the US patent system is in urgent need of reform. VLSI, not the original owner of this patent, but actually purchasing it from NXP semiconductors. So it does appear to be a company that's trying to get money out of Intel for just the fact that they own the patent rather than them trying to protect the technology that they actually have. And Nvidia not protecting their technology anymore. They're giving it out to the hands of the consumers. The RTX 4080 launched yesterday at the price point of $1,200, which is absolutely ridiculous considering other 80 class cards. You can see it's it's nearly double. It's it's a ridiculous price increase for the performance that you're getting. It's just absolutely absurd. I highly recommend that you don't buy it at the price point because Nvidia is just showing you that they can charge you whatever they want. And that's not cool, but it doesn't seem to be that way because according to some reports, all RTX 4080 sold out within an hour of them launching, including the higher end versions like the $1,500 ROG Strix. So all GPUs sold out. However, it does appear like a lot of them are making their ways to scalping platforms like eBay, but I will remind you that anytime something sells out, it is not necessarily an indication of demand. It could be an indication of supply. There was that one GPU launch that AMD had where they only had a thousand GPUs worldwide, so it was obvious it was going to sell out. Doesn't mean that anybody actually got their hands on them. Doesn't mean that there's actual pent up demand. It could just mean that there's a lack of supply and we won't actually know what the situation is until time marches forward. But don't pay the scalpers and don't pay Nvidia for this one. I think it's offensive where the RTX 4080 lies. The RTX 4090, I can justify, I cannot justify the RTX 4080. And I think a few people disagree with me on that, but you have to do that in the comments, which I'll read when, when this episode comes out. And there's another one coming tomorrow. See you then.